Woman tied to bed with leather straps, the doctor spreads her legs and then reaches into her private place to help her release her pressure and desire. The woman struggles, but nothing changes. The well-dressed professor claims it's his original psychiatric treatment, but it's really for his own personal gratification. Kate's stepfather signed her into an insane asylum after he caught her riding her childhood friend in the stables. They did it to curb her desires and locked up in the same room as her was Lydia, the former madam who controlled everything in the world of prostitution. And the asylum's customized treatment for Lydia was to strap her to a spinning chair for two hours at high speed to induce vertigo and to activate her defective nerves by provoking the unconscious excretion of every hole in her body. Lydia was signed into an insane asylum by her own son and suffered this brutal torture every day. But when Lydia sees the beautiful face of her new roommate, Kate, she has an occupational hazard. When she learns why Kate's been locked up, she finds a ray of hope. I am fallen. The helpless, desperate Kate gave Lydia hope that she could make a comeback. She's a expert at brainwashing people, and she's trying to brainwash Kate. Because out there is a city where your future awaits. I tell you, for true, you could have London wrapped around your fingers like a dazzling string of pearls. Alas, you are mad. Kate was tortured by doctors, who took her away for two hours every day. So all she could do was talk to her only roommate, Lydia. He took care to leave no mark as he stuffed his fat fingers inside me and named it his most modern physic. Lydia sympathized with Kate's plight, so she started making plans to escape in order to save Kate and help herself get back on her feet. He must use his weakness. His rod will be his ruin. And then the day came when they finally got their chance. The professor was going to take Lydia to the therapy and show her to the guests. Kate suddenly stopped the professor and told him that her body was very hot and needed to be treated right away. The professor was more than happy to help, but the guests waiting outside put him in a quandary. Lydia helps out by saying she'll help distract them until he's finished. So the professor agreed, but Lydia turned around and told the visiting doctors and guests that the professor was using a new treatment on Kate. Then she took them on a tour of the procedure. Here, the professor was committing atrocious acts of cruelty. Kate steals the key from him as she fights through the pain. And when the doctors and guests arrived, they were greeted with this gruesome sight. The situation was in chaos. Lydia and Kate took the opportunity to escape from the consulting room and lock everyone inside with a key. Then they opened the doors to all the wards and released all the patients, whether they were crazy or not. And so the two of them escaped the asylum and went on to a new life of freedom. The woman looked up at the sky and took a deep breath, savoring the sweetness of the moment. Talk with me. I think it's best alone. I'm not your chat, mate. Don't spoil it. Since Charlotte's complete confrontation with Isaac and his brother, she'd asked Isaac to a picnic in the park from time to time for the excitement of it all. But the two families were still at loggerheads. To avoid suspicion, Charlotte and Isaac never went to the park at the same time. Even when they did meet, they only brushed against each other to get a whiff of each other's scent. After her flirtation with Isaac, Charlotte returns to Isabella's arms. The true friendship between the two women is still unbreakable. After their last loss, the Isaac brothers turn their attention to real estate. They learn it of a promising plot of land for sale in the United States. The seller had just arrived in London two days earlier. The brothers immediately went to visit. The American landowner not only has an attractive piece of land, but also a very important wife, Margaret, who was hanged in season two, has finally returned, though Margaret was eventually exiled. She's a seasoned lover and has managed to seduce a gentleman who's willing to do anything for her. The once overbearing butt is now drinking tea and embroidering flowers. Hal asks Emily to get close to the lady of the house in order to buy the land. Instead, we're treated to a reunion between the prostitute and her ex bud. Emily is on the verge of screaming her head off. Margaret, with a plum, called her outside to catch up on old times. Were you here? You were hanged. I've got a slippery neck. Margaret advised her to mind her own business and keep her mouth shut. That way, Margaret could make sure the deal went through. Emily just wanted to make money and get on with her career. So she agreed to keep quiet. The land deal was finalized. Margaret finally found the time to return to the place where she'd fought so hard. The Wells family, who had been separated from each other, were finally reunited. Margaret told the story of her year in exile. She was doing well with her American husband. Margaret was relieved to know that her daughters had taken down Lydia and continued to build on her family's legacy. 
or clever girls. Or handsome boys. But Margaret, by rights, should have been executed, so she had no place in London. She came back to take her family away with her and her American husband, but William said that he and his son would probably end up in slavery if they went to America. His words brought the discussion to a standstill. Margaret, on the other hand, said she would discuss these matters later. She couldn't stay here much longer now. She had to go back to her other home. But later that night, Margaret met with her best friend, Nancy, and learned of her daughter's feud with Isaac's brother. She was on the verge of selling her land to an arsonist, so Margaret had to stop the deal from going through. Meanwhile, everyone is at Isabella's estate to watch a huge boxing match. The noble lady of high society walks down the stairs with a charming bod and enters the stage hand in hand with everyone watching and applauding. They've decided to make their love affair public tonight. Bravo! Bravo! Charlotte and Isabella's bravery has earned them the respect of all. But the boxing match in Charlotte's honor had an unexpected visitor. Her enemies, the Isaac brothers, have brought their newfound American landlord to join in the fun. Charlotte fakes a fight with Isaac to cover up her secret affair with him. The boxers are practically family. So if you don't want your pretty little face messed up, you'll behave like a lamb. <laughs> when the boxing match began, the fighters in the ring were in a frenzy. Charlotte and Isaac are watching each other passionately. Margaret arrives at the estate to prevent the sale of the land from being signed. But Margaret was caught in the crossfire between her American and London husbands. It turns out the landowner's interest was piqued by the intense boxing match. William, the match manager, warmly introduced his fighters and hoped he'd bet more. Here the two men are chatting enthusiastically. But Margaret, who was not far away, was very anxious. She asked Charlotte to call her American husband over. Charlotte then realized that it was her new stepfather standing next to her stepfather. She called the American landlord to the side as requested, but the sensitive Hal saw this and thought Charlotte was going to ruin his business. So he immediately sent his brother Isaac to eliminate Charlotte. And that's exactly what Isaac wanted. Isaac grabbed Charlotte and took her upstairs. At this point, the landowner, who was already in communication with Margaret, approached Hal in a rage. But I don't do business with arsonists. Take a look at yourself before venturing into the marketplace again. Having lost a big deal, Hal decided that Charlotte was behind the deal, so he angrily rushed upstairs and pulled Isaac and Charlotte apart as they made out. But when Hal pulled too hard, Charlotte fell down the stairs. When Kate and Lydia heard the noise, Hal ran off with his brother, and that was the end of Charlotte, a harlot in the prime of her life. Charlotte's death left everyone in a state of overwhelming grief. Charlotte was the most decent person I ever met. Those who loved her say, those who fought her battles of wits and courage. I loved her. Cursed her. Now I'm bereft. Charlotte's death is regretted by all. This brave and courageous woman, who dared to love and hate, was the envy of all. Despite her irrevocable origins, this bright rose with thorns will not wither, but will bloom again, nourished by freedom.